Chapter 11, Post-Resuscitation Care. Welcome to the lesson on post-resuscitation care. In this video, we'll discuss what to do after resuscitation methods to care for an individual's respiratory system, cardiovascular system, neurological system, renal system, gastrointestinal system, and hematological system. If an individual has a return of spontaneous circulation, or ROSC, start post-resuscitation care immediately. The initial PALS process is intended to stabilize a child or an infant during a life-threatening event. Post-resuscitation care is meant to optimize ventilation and circulation, preserve organ and tissue function, and maintain recommended blood glucose levels. For the pediatric post-resuscitation care algorithm to guide you in your treatment, refer to Figure 17 in your corresponding PALS manual. When caring for the respiratory system after resuscitation, follow this checklist chest x-ray to verify ET tube placement, arterial blood gas or ABG, and correct acid or base disturbance. Continuously monitor pulse oximetry. Continuously monitor heart rate and rhythm. If the individual is intubated, end tidal carbon dioxide. Maintain adequate oxygenation, that is, saturation between 94 and 99 percent. Maintain adequate ventilation to achieve PCO2 between 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury unless otherwise indicated. Intubate if oxygen and other interventions do not achieve adequate oxygenation. You need to maintain a patent airway in the child with decreased level of consciousness. Ventilation is not possible through non-invasive means, for example, continuous positive airway pressure or CPAP. Control pain with analgesics and anxiety with sedatives, for example, benzodiazepines. When caring for the cardiovascular system after resuscitation, follow this checklist. Arterial blood gas or ABG and correct acid-base disturbances. Transfuse or support hemoglobin and hematocrit as needed. Continuously monitor heart rate and rhythm. Continuously monitor blood pressure with arterial line. Check central venous pressure or CVP. Check urine output. Chest X-ray. 12 lead ECG. Consider echocardiography. Maintain appropriate intravascular volume. Use vasopressors and titrate blood pressure to treat hypotension if needed. Continuously monitor pulse oximetry. Maintain adequate oxygenation, that is, saturation between 94 and 99 percent. Correct metabolic abnormalities, chemistry panel. When caring for the neurological system after resuscitation, follow this checklist. Elevate head of bed if blood pressure can sustain cerebral perfusion. Maintain temperature by avoiding hyperthermia and treating fever aggressively. Do not rewarm hypothermic cardiac arrest individuals unless hypothermia is interfering with cardiovascular function and treat hypothermia complications as they arise. Maintain blood glucose by treating hypo and hyperglycemia. Hypoglycemia is defined as less than or equal to 60 mg per deciliter. Monitor and treat seizures with seizure medications and by removing metabolic and toxic causes. Continuously monitor blood pressure with arterial line. Maintain cardiac output and cerebral perfusion. Normal ventilate unless temporizing due to intracranial swelling. Perform frequent neurological exams. Consider CT and or EEG, electroencephalogram. Keep in mind that dilated unresponsive pupils, hypertension, bradycardia, respiratory irregularities, or apnea may indicate cerebral herniation. When caring for the renal system after resuscitation, follow this checklist. Monitor urine output. Infants and small children should urinate more than one milliliters per kilogram an hour. Larger children should urinate more than 30 milliliters an hour. Exceedingly high urine output could indicate neurological or renal problem or diabetes insipidus. Perform routine blood chemistries, arterial blood gas or ABG, and correct acid or base disturbances. Urinalysis, when indicated. Maintain cardiac output and renal perfusion. Consider the effect of medications on renal tissue or nephrotoxicity. Consider urine output in the context of fluid resuscitation. Toxins can sometimes be removed with urgent or emergent hemodialysis when antidotes fail or are not available. 
When caring for the gastrointestinal system after resuscitation, follow this checklist. Monitor nasogastric or NG and orogastric or OG tube for patency and residuals. Perform a thorough abdominal exam. Tense abdomen may indicate bowel perforation or hemorrhage. Consider abdominal ultrasound and or abdominal CT. Perform routine blood chemistries including liver panel, arterial blood gas or ABG, and correct acid or base disturbances. Be vigilant for bleeding into the bowel, especially after hemorrhagic shock. When caring for the hematological system after resuscitation, follow this checklist. Monitor complete blood count and coagulation panel. Transfuse as needed by correcting thrombocytopenia. Fresh frozen plasma is to replenish clotting factors. Consider calcium chloride or gluconate if massive transfusion required. Correct metabolic abnormalities or chemistry panel, especially after transfusion. This concludes our lesson on post-resuscitation care. Thank you for choosing NHCPS as your provider.